Well, hello, quilty peeps, and welcome back to my sewing room. Today we are doing block three, five inch hometown block. Okay, we've got, so once again, I've got 12 of these ready to go, so I'm just gonna unstack them and show you. This is block number three in uh, a hometown series. And I'm doing this as a Sew Your Stash series because this is perfect for using your one and a half inch squares. And if you're like me and you save your one and a half inch squares, leftovers you have plenty to work with. And so I have 12 blocks to go into my quilt so far, even though I know I need 16 now, like I told you in my last video, I need 16 of each one. So. There's my 12 I have done so far in the five inch. And then here is the 10 inch size. Okay, so there's block three. And let's just set that one here. Here, let me slide this over just a little bit. Let's set that one there so we've got that to look at. Let me set these up out of the way. I thought you might like to see this is the latest house that we've done so far I've got the tulip house that I'm working on now in our hometown so along which this video kind of doubles as a tutorial for that and we're gonna be using the five and a half inch trim it ruler because of the blocks finish at five and then we're also going to be using the two and a half inch size for these quarter segments here in the corners, okay? And so what you need is you will need 12 of these matching squares right here for these little tulips in the corners. And then you're going to need four one and a half inch squares. These are one and a, these are all one and a half inch. This is four one and a half inch squares for this right here. I don't know if you can see that, let me pull it out. And then you need one one and a half inch square to go in the center, okay? And then I've got my backgrounds right here. And so I'm just gonna pull 16 of those. Just got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, nine. 16 of those for the backgrounds. And of course, I just pulled from, in my last video, I showed you how I'm cutting, you know, for my hometown collection. So I just pulled some from there to get started on this. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew these corner segments, okay? And today I am sewing with Miss Doris, and she is named after Doris Day, who was... Uh, one of my mom's favorites and still is. And so I grew up listening to Doris Day and, and you know, I love everything vintage. So of course I had to name a machine after her. All right, so what we're gonna do is these are for the tulip sections right here. So we're going to need four backgrounds, squares. I'm just gonna pull those kind of up here on the corner of the machine. And then we're gonna need four of these first okay and we're going to sew these together and we're just going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance and I'll be using this line right here I'm going to grab some readers so I can see what I'm doing in a little bit closer to me or move my chair over a little bit. I feel like I'm not centered. I don't want to sew on an angle. So how are you guys today? Are you all getting some sewing done? I hope so. I hope you're having nice, beautiful fall weather. We are. Okay. 
do. All right, so we've got those four done. I'm going to grab some squares here for my bonus quilt and run these through the machine so that I can press these open. This is the one that I had already sewn. It goes in my bowl. So I just bring these over here. Move my papers out of the way. I'm going to set these seams. And I kind of like to line them up like this. And open them up. I, I like to fill with my fingers at first because I want to make sure that they're opened up all the way. I don't want any little pleats or folds in there to make my blocks inaccurate or, you know, when I go to sew them together. And then I usually will just roll that, make sure that it's going to stay. Go ahead and press and then put a clapper or two on there leave that there and then while that's cool I'm going to take these remaining eight right here and sew these together now you may think okay that's crazy why are you sewing two of the same fabric together well this block happens to be that I use all of the same fabric and so I just went ahead and am sewing these together you could cut one of these in a one and a half by two and a half but I am just using squares, and this is a scrappy stash video, so for that, for those purposes, um, I just wanted to show you that you could, the option of sewing two squares together if you wanted to, or just having a rectangle, so whichever you want to do, you know, it's just a matter of quilty math, but because I'm using up one and a half inch squares, or I'm assuming that you are using from your scraps, even though I'm using the same collection, I could have easily cut one and a half by two and a half, but I wanted to show you that, you know, you can just use just your one and a half inch squares bucket for this. And so that's, you know, that's the reason why I'm, why I'm sewing two squares together. There's always different ways to do it. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say about that? Oh, so you can also, if you're doing this, these happen to all be the same fabric, but you could do this one different fabric, like this could be a different blue, and these could be the same, you know, something like that. And so they would just be squares when you're doing that. I hope this makes sense. It's like talking a lot about quilty math and the difference, but you know, there's always more than one way to do things. And so I'm just kind of explaining why I'm using one and a half inch squares, the same fabrics and sewing them together. <laughs> And you know, that only takes a minute right here, so it's just not that big of a deal. It's just a matter of using up your stash and not having to pull out any other fabrics to recut when you can just simply use one and a half inch squares. And like I say, if you're like me, you have a lot of them and it's fun to be able to use them up. I love making kind of something out of nothing or, you know, using my leftovers to make something. Okay, I'm just going to let that cool for a minute. And I've got those. And then the next thing that we're going to do is, so we're just going to set this aside. And remember, that's for the tulip part. And then I'm going to take these four squares and each one of them get, these are the four squares that go here. And each one of them get a background sewn to them. So I may have grabbed a few more backgrounds than I needed, but that's okay. It's better to have too many than not enough, right? So I'm just using my Seam So Easy guide here. It's designed by me and produced by Riley Blake Designs and distributed by Riley Blake Designs and that's who I design my fabrics for and they distribute all my notions and fabrics and things like that that have to do with my sew-alongs and um, so 
So if you need to find one of those, you can easily do a Google search. Okay, so let me grab another square here. Share my bonus. This is kind of nice to be able to do um, four segments at the same time because it's kind of like clotheslining, even though I'm only doing one block at a time. So we don't have to run just one piece together. Okay, let's take those off. Set those over here and reset these up. For pressing. Okay, I didn't use the roller that time, but I think it'll be okay. I felt with my fingers they were completely open. Now I'm going to get a clapper that doesn't have any heat on it at all, so that will absorb that. And then we're going to keep these stacked up right here. I'm going to put all of these the same direction. It really doesn't, sometimes it matters which direction you're sewing these, but we're just going to sew these together, and you're always going to end up with a background square in one corner, no matter how you turn it. So that's how we're going to set that up. These both have seams on both segments, so it doesn't matter which one's up and which one's down. I normally like to sew with the seam up if I can. I remember to do that just to make sure they don't flip over when I'm, you know, running them under the presser foot. And again, this entire block is going to be pressed with all of the seams open. I've been doing that for years and years, and I've never had a problem with, you know, my seams coming apart or anything like that. I use really good thread. I use kind of a smaller stitch. And, you know, thread is much stronger than it used to be, and this RFL thread is very strong. And I've just never had a problem with my seams coming open, and believe me, I've quilted for a lot of years, my whole life, in fact. So that's a lot of years. And I've just, I've never had a problem with that. And, um, but of course, it's always a personal choice. I'm just showing you what works for me and what I like to do. And that doesn't mean that you can't do things differently. As I like to say, you are the boss of your own quilt. And so you can make those decisions. There's always several ways to do things. I'm just simply here to show you my way and what works for me. Okay, so now we're going to set those over and for sure I'm going to be using my um let me take those off so I can I'm going to be using my seam roller especially in those intersections just to make sure that they're open now that I've set my seams or squished my squished my seams together and I'm just going to do two at a time because I kind of do that according to what's going to fit under the clapper. Okay, and I'm going to put that side down. This still has a little bit of warmth to it. So I'm going to put the cool side down. Open that one. Open that one. My cast is here filming me. She's going to keep me straight in case I, in case I um, don't press some of my seams open like in my last video. <laughs> okay. Reed's taking a nap. Did you see Reed in my last video in the very end? A lot of you commented about how cute he was. Thank you. He's so cute. He's so fun. I was telling Cass before we started film, I just want to hold him all day. <laughs> okay, so while those are cooling for just a minute, I'm going to set these aside here. I'm going to set this up, kind of how it goes, right here. And so the colored, the colored squares are going to go for to the outside 
and the background's going to go to the inside here and it sort of ends up looking like a little four petal daisy in there is how I look at it you know it's how I think of things in flowers tulips daisies <laughs> I just do okay so we're going to set that there get that ready to go put those there these are probably cool enough I normally you know would let them cool off a little bit more but for the sake of filming I think they're fine and so this is what you end up having this little thing that kind of looks like a heart all right all of these look like a heart when you turn them that way before we make them into the tulip and so this is another quick easy method that I do I could have just made half square triangles um, first and then just sewn the four together like two half square triangles and then sewn all of these together but I like to sew them together like this first and then add my easy corner triangles so all I do with that is I just add them here to the corners okay I just make sure everything's lined up and I'm gonna start right on the corner here and I'm gonna follow this corner line all along and then I'm automatically just sewing sewing that um, you know that easy corner triangle so that it flips correctly when I'm doing this I always like to have my background up there you know have them on the diagonal so that I know I'm not sewing onto a wrong corner of the block so that I know I'm always going correctly so just turn them like this so it's a little heart facing you It helps me to get that. <laughs> I don't know if you want to call it quilty terminology, but I always like to see what I'm envisioning here, like a heart, just things like that, so I know that I'm going the correct direction. So I'm just passing that along if it helps you. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut these three off and do the other side. Put those in for pressing. Put my readers back on. And then I can just go ahead and turn these around and do the other side because no seams are going to cross over or anything like that. So might as well just do them at the same time. And then they can be cooling under the clappers at the same time. I get this last one. Now, you can always mark your squares like this with a pencil mark on the back from, from corner to corner. But I just find it easier, especially with these smaller pieces, I never mark because I just use the center line of my Seam So Easy guide. And so I don't have to take that time to mark. Okay, so here's, I must have grabbed 20 squares instead of 16 that I needed because I have four left over. And that's that's more quilty math. <laughs> okay. Grab a bonus square. All right. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is check these just to make sure. See, that's going to be a tulip shape. So I can go ahead and just trim these off and you can do them a quarter of an inch or a little bit larger than a quarter of an inch. I wouldn't do them smaller because then it's harder to get those seams to lay down when you're pressing. So you may want to even trim a little bit, you know, larger than a quarter of an inch. But I found if I trim too short, like under quarter of an inch, that they don't stay down as easily when they're pressed open. And so that's, you know, when I'm trimming, that's kind of what I keep in mind. It doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to measure this because it's already sewn. And then, of course, these are very tiny, so I don't save these leftovers. At some point, you have to decide what size you're going to save, right? <laughs> and then I bring these over here. Set my seams or squish my threads together, whatever you want to call it. And then open these up. And now... 
when I open these up, that's exactly what I'm doing is I just open it up. I don't pull on it because, you know, it is a triangle. Even though it's already sewn, I don't want to stretch out these outer corners. And so it's just easier for me to do one half at a time. And I love pressing these seams open. It just makes my block very accurate. When you're pressing to one side with little seams like this, it always takes up a little bit of space in the block. It, it just makes your block a little bit smaller. And so I like to just press open. I even pressed open on the large, you know, on the larger block on the 10 inch. Okay, so now I'm just gonna set those there. They don't need to be going the same direction. I'm just gonna make sure I open them up flat. And use a good hot iron and see now that they're all open like that I can go ahead and I like to leave it on for you know several seconds so that I get it good and hot use a cool clapper and then I'm just going to do the same thing with these we're going to have this block done in no time that you see in the pictures in the opening video I have the first three blocks together on the design wall. I'm really excited how they're starting to look together. And I'm excited to end up making all of these blocks, um, not only for the hometown sew along quilt, but for a quilt, a large quilt for my bed. And in my last video, I said that I'm going to do 16 of 16 blocks. So far, I've only designed 10 because of the five inch blocks because that's what goes in in the quilt for our sew along. But I'm gonna keep doing these videos and end up doing six more. So that I have 16 blocks, 16 each, and I'm gonna be making a square quilt. Now in my last video, when I talked about the cutting segment at the end of the video, I talk about all of that quilty math. So if you want to go back to the last video, which was block number two, because this is number two, number three, and you know, you can hear about all the math and what I'm doing in my plans there. Okay, so we're just gonna let that cool for a minute. So while that's cooling, I think I might as, might as well just uh, press these open. These are my little, I emptied this bowl from last time I was sewing. I might as well just press these. These are blocks that I am sewing together as four patches in one of my bonus projects. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Put a clapper on them and then when they're cool, I just put them over here in this. These are to be pressed as well, and then I can just take them and sew them into four patches. And so, that's that bonus quilt going on right now. And as I get a little bit farther along with that, I'll, I'll show you that in one of my videos. Okay. I have shown you in some past videos kind of the start of that. All right, I think these are nice and cool. I've got these right here. And then this is when, you know, I've shown you this before when I take, take this and hold it up to my two and a half inch and see if I need to trim anything off. And you can see those lines lining up the center seams right here and going across here. And see how that's just, I think that's going to be good to go, right? So all of those are good to go. And then I can go ahead and set them like this, the way they're going to go on the design board. This is where this really comes in handy, and I'm constantly using this so that I can make sure that I get my block set up the way it needs to be. I'm going to move that up just a little bit so maybe easier for Cassidy to film. And then I'm going to flip that over there, flip that over there, and flip that over there, and do my quarter inch seams there first. 
and I'm just going to line up at the end and the beginning right here. Do my quarter inch seam. Now you can pin at this point. I'm not a pinner unless, you know, I'm doing borders or, you know, great big blocks that need to be pinned and things like that. But I prefer to just use my fingers. That doesn't mean you have to. You can. Again, you're the boss of your own quilting and uh, your own quilts, and you can decide what works best for you. And honestly, you know, I used to pin all the time because that's how I was taught, but I don't know, I just ended up, especially with the small patchwork, just ended up not pinning. It was just easier for me to kind of manipulate the blocks and make them line up from beginning to end. So I'm just going to kind of lay that out there just because I know that that's where that goes. And let me, just for the sake of, let me run another one of these bonus segments through. Because I'm going to sew the other side. I just want to make sure everything is looking the way it's supposed to look. And I'm going to go ahead and sew the other side on before I press them. So they can be pressed at the same time. They're small enough segments that they can fit under you know, under a clapper. So this is what I mean right here, pinning and how I make things work. If I just go ahead and lay that down, see how that's just looks like it's a little bit short. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to, because this is cotton and because I haven't starched my fabric super duper heavy, I'm going to stretch that and make that fit down there. And because the one that's longer it works out that this is on the feed this is underneath and so the feed dogs are gonna feed that through a little bit at fast as, how do i see this because the feed dogs of the machine are underneath the fabric that is underneath here will be fed through just at a little bit faster rate than the top piece because there's no feed dogs up here and so it ends up working out so it's going to line up by the time i get to the end see that I hope that made sense. That was kind of confusing. But I just take each segment as it comes along, and if there's a little teeny bit of a problem like that as it presents itself, I just like to make it work. And so I'm in control of each little segment, and I never just run it under the machine and just assume it's going to line up. Okay, I just I like to see what I'm doing. I like to see where the needle goes into the fabric. And I usually just start sewing at the beginning, line up at the end there, and then hold this in the center until I get to that point. Let's feed another bonus segment through. Cassidy set these up for me. Thanks, Cass. <laughs> these little bonus squares before we started filming. Okay. Now we're going to come over here and squish these threads together. And I've got a segment that looks like that. I'm going to open them up and I'm definitely going to be using a seam roller. I like a seam roller that is flat and not curved. So that I have a nice flat surface. And notice my ironing board surface is not real squishy. I don't like to use a real squishy surface because I feel that it during the pressing on patchwork it kind of distorts your blocks. I don't like anything that's like that or that's why I don't like the curved because I just find for me it works better if I just have flat surfaces. I do have batting under here but it's thin batting and uh, I will link as I usually do my DIY ironing board video and how I talk about my ironing boards and you know how I use use them and my vintage irons and things like that so how I make my ironing boards and use them okay so let me get that nice and hot and then we've got one more segment here I can't remember if I set that same so if I didn't I'm going to probably got chatting away a little bit and I'm easily distracted that way when I'm trying to remember things that I want to tell you or explain what I'm doing instead of just having you watch me. I like to kind of 
explain, even though I say the same things over and over again. But for those of you who are subscribers and watch my videos, then you'll know that I'm repeating myself often. But for those of you who may be new, I'd like you to hear what I'm doing. Okay, so let's let that cool for a minute. And I don't know. I showed you all of these. I really can't do anything else without. Let's take a look at that again. I love these bigger blocks. These are the ones I'm going to be doing a table runner. So I'll probably end up doing 16 of these blocks because I decided to do 16 different of the other blocks. I was going to do them two on top of each other. I don't know. I might end up doing three on top of each other and do 15 instead of 16. I don't know because three by five setting would probably, you know, work right. So I would maybe leave one out or make some, make an extra one out of one of them. But I'm afraid that if I did two rows of eight, that that would be way too long of a table runner. So, but I could do a bed runner. I like long bed runners. So we'll see as it gets closer, you know, what I end up doing with that. But, um, that's kind of where my mind is going right now at that point. Okay, let's see. Sometimes I like to just turn these over on the cool side and see if I can get a little bit more heat up out of there. And other times too, speaking of repeating myself, I know I've told you this before, but sometimes if it's a really, if I feel like it's not getting flat enough or there's a lot of seams or something like that, then I'll go ahead and turn it over and press again. This is fine, so I'm not going to do that. Press it from the front and then go ahead and put another clapper and then I've kind of got it from both sides, those seams, and that helps to get that flat if you're having a segment that maybe is, you know, having a little bit hard, harder time getting flat. And I do that a lot on my blocks when I'm finishing them at the very end when I'm giving them their final press. And so this is what this is going to look like. I always lay it on here so I make sure that I haven't turned this upside down or something like that, which, you know, even though I still make mistakes and sometimes sew the wrong segment to the wrong segment, but that's that's why we have seam rippers, right? Isn't this one cute? I've had this for a long time. I have a bunch of these and they're made out of the handles of vintage silverware. So can you see in there I've got got quite a few of them in there and I just love them because they're vintage I love all things vintage okay so when I'm going to sew this segment to this segment it looks like they line up from end to end very nicely but I just kind of wanted to tell you that if this one is a little bit longer or this one's a little bit longer say for instance this one's longer then you would want to put that under just because of the rule that I told you about um, that the feed dogs are going to pull your pieces through at a little bit faster rate if the piece that is underneath and so again I'm just starting to sew at the very beginning letting the needle and the presser foot hold that block so that I can line this up here. I'm going to be making sure that these line up on the sides, these center squares. If I'm worried um, that they're not going to, I'll go ahead and take these double pins and just barely poke in one just to hold that so that because it's pinned on both sides, that cannot shift. They're small enough, uh, narrow enough, or fine enough of pins that I can sew over them especially if there's just a little pokey in the end. And I'll just remove it and do that right there again to ensure that these line up in the middle. And then that's going to be lined up on the corners, on the ends. I'm going to continue running that through. So that's why I always keep a little pin cushion handy there. And then... Because I want to get this nice and flat instead of sewing the other side, I'm just going to do this separately first. Let's see how that lines up nicely there. Okay, we're going to set those seams. Open them up in the beginning, in the middle, whichever 
seems easiest and go ahead and really push down a little bit harder, especially across those intersections there. And this is where I especially like to press because I've got a lot of seams going on. If I was starting to iron back and forth, then, um, you know, I might be able to flip one of those seams over accidentally. And then I lift it up, make sure the seams are going straight, and go ahead and put a clapper on there. And you know what, I think instead of just sitting here, I might just do a few four patches while we're waiting for that to cool. And so what I do with that is I'm just gonna flip them over. And again, like any small patchwork segment, I start right there at the beginning and right there at the beginning and then make sure that those are lined up in the middle. And if they're having a hard time, then, then I'll grab my double pins and, you know, kind of make them line up. But if they're easily lined up, then I just go ahead and sew across. I'll go ahead and just throw that in the bowl. Maybe set that over there. I want to use that in a minute. Let's see. Okay. Now I know that I'm going to add that to that. And again, I'm going to check to see if one's longer or shorter than the other one to see if I have to ease anything in. This looks pretty good, but this to me looks like this top piece looks like it's a little bit longer. And so I'm going to flip that over and put that on the under underneath side just to see if that will even itself out because of the feed dogs. Okay, I'm going to make sure my needle goes down there. I'm going to line this up. And so instead of lining everything up, the whole entire block, I just i am making sure that my fingers line up. To the next segment because that's all I need to worry about. It only sews one little, you know, a segment or intersection where these meet that you need to be really careful about at a time. And so that's all I worry about. I'm going to go as slow as I need to to make sure that that, you know, is going to don't want to do the same colors there. Oh, don't want to do the same backgrounds. Let's pick another one. Here we've got orange and Orange and steel, that looks a little Halloween-y. That's kind of fun. Okay. All right, over here, let's set the seams. It's looking pretty good. Just kind of want to open it up and check it out. And then this will be the last pressing of this block. I'm going to roll over those. Press it. Make sure I don't have any seams going a different way. And then just really apply that iron onto that seam and then back over here. Since this is the last pressing, I'm going to just make sure that I press everything good and get a lot of heat going on in that fabric and then I'll use two clappers side by side on the bottom and then go ahead and do some quilty Jenga and let that stack up and the weight of that let that cool down and while I'm doing that I'll go ahead and do a couple more of these And let me try to think while I'm doing this. I'll sew and think if I've left anything out or if I want to add any more information. If you have any questions about, about the hometown sew along, you know, that's here in my videos too. I did put a link to that. Now, speaking of that, that is something I can talk about for a minute. Um, I am getting a lot of comments saying I don't know where to find the links. And I've, I've left all the links for you, for your convenience, so you don't have to search for them. But they're in the video description. 
And so right under the video is a sentence or two, like the title of the video. And then depending on what what um, device you're looking, your laptop, your iPad, your phone, or whatever, it'll say more or read more, or there's just a little arrow. You click on that, and that opens up the whole description of the video, where all the links are, where I talk about the video, and talk about everything that you need to know. So that's how you find, you know, find those videos that you're looking for, or th excuse me, those links that you're looking for where you can click onto other videos, where you can click onto my blog. And so I always have a link in there that talks about the hometown so along because this is kind of part of it a little bit. And so if you're interested in that or want to know about this so along and read all about it, I have a link to that. And okay, let's see if that is enough time. Let's unstack this. I usually keep my clappers kind of like this all in the same area. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, and again, if I wanted to, if I felt like it wasn't flat enough, I would press it from the front and stack up the clappers using a cool side, not the warm side, because they haven't cooled off yet. And then I'm putting these on. These are my smallest size design boards. And these are seven inches. So this five inch, this measures five and a half inches now. But of course, you're going to um, finish it. It will finish at five inches. And so this is what where the trim it ruler comes in. And you can lay this on here and just kind of line those, line those up and see if anything sticks out that you need to trim off. And it looks like this is lining up really good, except for, let me turn this right here just so I can show you. And I'll go ahead and trim that off. I don't know if I've even got my rotary right here, but you guys know how to trim. I don't need to trim that off here. But can you see that, Cass? Mm -hmm. There's a little bit peeking out right here. Not, not any of this, but just this right here. And so I'll just go ahead and trim that off before I sew it into the quilt. And so that's where these really help. And again, last time I showed you that if your block is off, if you have a problem and it's way off and you can't figure out if it's too small, too big, you just take your ruler and you lay this on your block and you can see where all these lines, that's why I put these lines going across all these different ways so that it will, you know, match up with any size block. Some lines are going to line up somewhere with your seams so that you can see if you are doing larger than quarter inch seam allowances or smaller and you can kind of find out what your problem is there or which sections that you may be having a problem with. Okay, so there we go. There's another, this is number three, hometown block. All these blocks are called hometown. They're just five inch, but they're all called hometown and then they have a number attached to them. So this is number three, hometown block in a five inch size. And then once again, here's, number three hometown block in the 10 inch size and I will give you the cutting recipe for both of them in the description of this video and you know if you're doing the hometown sew along you already have the cutting in the sew along guide for these small blocks but I'll be giving you that cutting I hope you've enjoyed this block this is really a fun one again I like how it looks like little tulips and this looks like a little four-petaled daisy. And if you know me, I love daisies and all kinds of flowers. And um, I think I've given you all the information about this block. And then in a couple of days, I'll be filming for block number four. And I hope you have a quilty kind of day. And I'll chat with you later.